Hey everybody, welcome once again back to the channel. Tonight, today, afternoon, whatever, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, rollable tables, what they are, just a high level overview with a little demonstration of one that I built for the Lost Minds of Fandelver campaign that I'm fishing up with some friends. So in a nutshell, if uh, you've been playing D&D, etc., you have a rollable table. You know, typically in an adventure, it's going to be printed out in the book like a wandering monsters or a random loot table or something to that effect where it's going to be like, hey, you know, every hour or if they're camping overnight here, roll a dice, a D20. And on a roll of or a D12 or whatever, on this roll, such and such happens or something. In the VTT world, they've added that ability as well. And Foundry is uh, also has that. So you're trying to figure out, like, what am I going to use it for? How do I use it? How do I build one? So you're like, well, let's just hit to the Foundry website and check it out. Well, <clears throat> right off the top, you realize that the Foundry Reds website, as a work in progress, doesn't have a lot of information. Well, has a lot of information. I take that back. So you go here to the rollable tables, and it's still got a placeholder. And again, this is beta software and developer Atropos is, is working hard and every release there is new documentation and everything coming out. So just because you don't see it there doesn't mean that they've forgotten about it. Um, I've been there every release, always checking it and you know seeing new content that's coming up. So the content that before uh, when it launches on version one, According to what they've said, a lot of it will be fully flushed out, flushed out. So should be good to go. But anyway, so let's go back to uh, to our game and just kind of say, well, maybe uh, I'll just uh, I'll just wing it and uh, figure it out. So what I've got here, I've got my game up here, and if you're a GM, the rollable tables tab is over here. You can either click on it. You can also right click to bring a pop out of it. Uh, there's a couple options here. You can create a folder, as with some of the ways of organizing content. You can create a table, show you a blank one real quick, enter the name of your table, what it is, a table to test things. What formula? Let's do a 1D4, draw with replacement. If you uncheck this, that it will actually lock items. So if you have a limited amount of things or phrases or something and you want things to be eliminated, you would uncheck this. Of course, display role to chat if you want it publicly or if you want it kind of private GM only. And then you hit the plus and you basically put in what you want, uh, what kind of content. Text, it is, you just say, you know, let's just say, hey, on a 1D4, we got a hello. So let's add something else. Goodbye. All right, so we're going to update that, and then we're going to roll it. And just like that, you have uh, random things that will generate and say, so if I click the draw with replacement, you'll see what happens. It starts eliminating items. So now the oh yeah will not display again. So now it'll be now goodbye will not. Hello won't. And then the what? So you can choose entity, which then brings you to anything that's within the game. So like an actor, a monster token, items from a random loot, macros, kind of whatever your imagination might be, compendium. It'll pull the compendiums that you have, either the SRD content or if you've got your own compendiums that you've built, you can pull that information. So let's show you one that I built for this adventure. It's called a Wandering Monster Table. My formula is a 1D12, and I only I do not want draw with replacement, so I want to make sure that you know chance for everything to come back. Display roll chat. Nope, I don't want my folks to see what's happening. And then I have it here as Entity and then the Ochre Jelly. And you notice that they all have their icons. And if you add one and it's an Entity, it'll actually auto-populate the icon. So let's say, for instance, we'll put in a Kobold. Yeah, it helps if I spell them right. And when I update it, it automatically pulled the icon. Of course, you can change that and everything, but that'll mess up my table. The weight, so if you want something heavier weighted, obviously you can monkey around with this. And then the range, according to the Fandelver Adventure, Sturges are one to three, 
uh, ghouls are four to five, uh, Grix a six, bugbear seven to eight, skeleton nine, and then a uh, ochre jelly from eleven to twelve. So you can just open up your table once you have your table built. Click on roll, and it will display here. So if you're like, hey, we got an ochre jelly, and boom, you guys roll for initiative. Here we go, and life goes on, and you can kind of do that. So if you got magical items, a loot table phrases wild magic surges or something crazy this is the power of what a rollable table can do what's really neat is being able to tie these into macros either ones that you build or you know find out there so what i did i was like you know what in the lost mine of fandelver adventure it says roll a you know every couple hours as they're adventuring roll a 1d20 on a result of 1 to 17 nothing happens but if it's 17 to 20 then roll from, you know, an encounter takes place, roll from the monster table. So I built a macro, and you can see it here showing it's only to the game master. And we'll run it a few times. Okay, there we go. So I rolled a 2, so nothing happened. Then I rolled an 18, which triggered an event. And in that case, then the table rolled and a bugbear showed up. So let's show you exactly quickly what this macro is. Really simple. I actually got a lot of this from other macros that were built out there or hacked something in the in the wiki in the, excuse me, the community wiki has some samples. And then I was posting in Discord chat and got some other help from other folks. So uh, pretty easy. So just kind of going through here, we're creating a message. Hey, the mo wandering monster roll was and then what is the result? We're going to do a new roll, a 1d20. And then the result. So if the result is greater than 17, so right now it's going to send a message say, here, here is what the result is, right? Send me a message, even add the, 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 the sounds of the dice rolling and, and all that good stuff. But if the result is greater or equal to 17, let's find that wandering monster table and then do a GM roll and let them let the GM know that, hey, you know, we, we hit the number, so here it is. And that is it. So just something super easy super fun that uh, I use and the thing is in our game so far I've run it a few times players haven't really noticed because you know it's kind of like behind the DM screen right you just roll your uh, your d20 and life goes on and and all that stuff so no monster has actually been randomly generated yet for this adventure I mean it is a you know 15% chance on a 1d20 but anyways just kind of want to show you high level what uh, rollable tables can do. Uh, lots of, again, with everything with Foundry, lots of options, lots of flexibility, uh, lots of cool things that you can do with them. And hopefully this video will give you a little idea like, oh, yeah, I've got some ideas what to do it. If you flip through the player's handbook or the Dungeon Master's Guide or any other resource you're doing, you'll see there's tons of in-print rollable tables, right? You just got to convert those to your campaign. But that's all I've got, and hope you have a good one. Have fun, stay safe, happy gaming.